everyone, my name is Elaine, and today I'm going to be reviewing Natasha Ingin's Girls of Paper and Fire, a YA fantasy novel. The novel takes place in Akara, a fantasy realm reminiscent of feudal China. Akara is broken into three castes, paper, steel, and moon. The paper caste is the lowest caste, it is made up of humans. The moon caste is the highest caste, it is comprised of humanoids with animal features, or demons. The steel caste lies in the middle and is a blend of the other two castes. The demon king rules over Akara with an iron fist. Each year, his court elects eight members of the paper cast to come to his home, the Hidden Palace, to serve as his concubines. It is believed that this act will tighten the bonds between the moon and paper casts. During the year that Lee is chosen, she becomes the ninth girl to be given to the king. Although she tries to accept her new life as one of the king's concubines, which are also known as paper girls, Lee is unable to do so. She feels like a prisoner and cannot bring herself to love the king. As an act of rebellion, she refuses the demon king and takes a lover, Ren. Ren is one of the king's paper girls, a woman meant only for him. Their love is forbidden, but Lee doesn't care. She decides to risk everything to pursue her own emotions. Although loving Ren proves to be one of the most dangerous decisions that Lee can make, Lee finds it liberating, the one thing that can keep her both sane and happy. But can that happiness last when Lee discovers that Ren lies at the center of a plot to overthrow the king, a plot that Lee decides she wants to join? I thoroughly enjoyed Girls of Paper and Fire for several different reasons. First, I felt as though the novel's Asian influence made it feel both original and new. I don't feel as though books of this nature are common in mainstream young adult literature. Second, I appreciated how the novel included a pair of strong female leads who also happened to be lesbians. I enjoyed both Lee and Ren because they were courageous, rebellious women who chose to stand up to their oppressors. As a result, they sent an extremely positive message to Ingen's readers. They reminded her readers that it's okay to speak up against injustice and fight to protect oneself. Lee and Ren are also characters that Ingen's readers can look up to. They find a way to be themselves even against all odds. Finally, I appreciated the fact that both Ren and Lee were lesbians because LGBTQ issues and relations have yet to become a focus of mainstream literature. It's also extremely important for members of marginalized groups, such as members of the LGBTQ community, to see themselves and their experiences reflected in the literature that they read because it validates their experiences. I also enjoyed Ren and Lee's innocence. Instead of jumping right into sex and obsessing over sex, they shared several tender moments together where they simply talked, cuddled, held hands, and kissed. The relationships served as a wonderful reminder that romantic relationships are not all about sex. They're about companionship and comfort as well. Third, I adored Ningen's prose. I thought it was stunning. I was blown away by both her ability to paint clear pictures of her world and her ability to draw me into the story. I became extremely invested in the fate of several of her characters. With that being said, there were a few things which I did not like about the novel. First, Girls of Paper and Fire is riddled with grammatical errors, which disrupt the flow of Ingen's prose. Furthermore, she occasionally uses terms which would not be present within a medieval character's vocabulary. For example, Ingen writes, A steady scrape plays under the soundtrack of the tea house on page 128. The term soundtrack, which is used to describe a recording of the music associated with a film, could not be present within Lee's vocabulary because her world lacks both film and recorded music. Perhaps the term music or sounds would have been more appropriate. Second, Lee's name was short and simple. It made the book easy to read. However, whenever the honorific Z was added to the end of her name signifying that she is a paper girl and one of the king's concubines. I read her name as Lazy instead of Lee Z. I may be the only person to do this, I'm not sure, but it drove me a little crazy. Perhaps a different name or honorific would have worked a little better. Third, Ingen killed Lee's dog, Bao. Her actions were a cold and cruel form of unusual punishment for her readers. You don't kill your character's beloved pet dog. It's an unwritten rule. Finally, I felt as though Ingen should have fleshed out the other paper girls a little more, such as Zin, Zen, and Chenna, because they felt interchangeable. Other than their appearance, there wasn't much to differentiate them. I really liked Girls of Paper and Fire. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I think it's an amazing YA novel. I love the fact that it was an inclusive novel, that it had two strong female leads from the LGBTQ community. I liked the strong Asian influence. I liked that it was fast-paced. But there were a lot of grammatical errors. And sometimes Ingen used terms that probably shouldn't have been used, things that really didn't fit with the theme of her novel. Even so... I don't feel like this is a book that you should miss. I think you should get your own copy right now and give this a read. I don't think you'll be disappointed. If you want your own copy, please check out the link in the description. It comes at no extra cost to you and it really helps out the channel. And of course, if you liked what you saw here today, please hit that like button. I love thumbs up. Comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know what's up. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye everyone.